So now we'd like to invite Mr. Jim Christoph from Hong Kong, and he's calling from the uh, Skype, and I hope the Skype is uh, working well. Uh, maybe uh, you will be able to retrieve the uh, presentation material at the wiki site I have already uploaded uh, the, uh, at the, uh, for the uh, PDF file. And uh, he would, would like to uh, ask uh, Jean Christophe to start the, his present, presentation. Uh, Mr. Scott, can, can you put on the camera so I can see everyone? It would be nice. Sorry? I see everyone, I just see the whole right now. Sure. That's it. Uh, nice to see everyone. So today I'm going to present you Bearbox. Uh, Bearbox is uh, a bootloader, it's a fork of uh, Uboot, which was named some time ago uh, Uboot V2. Uh, Bearbox inherits the best of Uboot in the next channel. So basically, uh, we start from Uboot and we start to redesign it to have a driver model. Uh, bash, bash applications, uh, uh, little <coughs> applications, be more easy to port, be more easy to use. But first, what is responsible of a bootloader? A bootloader is very simple normally. First, you are supposed to bring up the box, set up the memory, load the kernel from somewhere, and jump the kernel. This is a basic work of any bootloader. And after you have advanced bootloader, so start with the box. Well, you have much more feature. Face sets of date, netboot, security, user interface, modules, uh, menu, self decompression, video, applications. Uh, so, Bearbox is one of these type of tools that will provide you much more feature than the basic bootloader, but still perform the basic bootloader at the high speed as possible. Bearbox starts in 2007 and was named Ubud V2. In 2009, after the ELCE 2009, Sasha and I uh, decided to rename Ubud V2 to Bearbox, so it's current name, and have our own rename list, own history of everything. And since then, we did 49 releases. Uh, our release is quite fast compared to other projects. It's one release per month. And for the maintenance, basically we maintain the current maintenance with just when we have some major bug uh, in the release. As the run is quite fast, you can integrate your work quite quickly and quite easily. So, website. Uh, Bearbox grows slowly. Because of, most of the time, compared to Uboot, uh, you can see if, since uh, Uboot is 2001 and 2007 was a code of Uboot who grew quite fast. In 2008, uh, we decided to keep the base of Uboot and clean it up. And we start from a, a clean path. Because in Uboot, you have a lot of legacy work that basically nearly no one has a platform, and it's very difficult to maintain. And you have some very specific work that's quite difficult to understand. So in 2008, we said, OK, we have two platforms, not all of them. We are going to keep the, keep the HUD, switch to the Kernel system, KPRP, and start to run device drivers. And since then, we grow slowly, because most of the time, we start to duplicate code. Uh, we make the code very sharing the own platform. To add a platform, you don't need so much code. And of course, we have much less platforms than, than you put in applications. So, the Bearbox is growing quite fast. For example, in 2008, we have in a year uh, 364 commits. And uh, last year, we get nearly 2,000. And this year, we just have three months, three releases. We are already at 442 million. So Bearbox is growing quite fast and quite smoothly every year, step by step. And we have more and more contributors. So it's not any more a uh, baby project. It's not to be a master project that attract people and vendors, such as Atmel, uh, Calceda, uh, Fiskians, and others. So as an post for the last two months, we already have more than 2,000 comments. We have 62 contributors, and we have new contributors all the time. So instead of uh, Bearbox, what do we support? We support mostly our platform, but we still have other platform. Or now we have Admin, uh, 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 83IMX, Nobody, we can have an NVIDIA, or not, 2, 4, 3, 4, uh, PXA, Samsung, 2, uh, 
uh, we don't have yet the last platform because none of us have a platform basically. Uh, we have the ARM reference platform, the SATIS Express that we have from the ARM 9, Cortex A9, and the Cortex A15. Inside of Mailbox, we have the, the ARM device drivers. So basically, you should have the code mostly with the kernel. We have also now starting to have servers, such as the CAN sedan, where you have a completely different environment, a completely different features. And we have also the design platform this is the way. We have BlackFi, Meme, SuperRings, BPC. We have one feature that is quite interesting, especially when we are developing features, uh, which is a cross architecture, the cross hours, this is a sandbox for Linux. So basically, you are going to compile Firebox for your host, uh, no matter which uh, architecture. Normally, it should work on uh, uh, 32-bit and 64-bit, and you can co compile it for ARM platform. I have some ARM laptops, so I do it on ARM. And you can compile the code of your PC or the power PC. And then you can start the development and you GDD for debugging. And you have, we have a working on the, on the BIOS to basically, because we don't like Grub, uh, it's very difficult to understand, very difficult to use, not very easy as a user interface. So we start a port on the x86 to be able to simplify the work and simplify, for example, you want the PC, you want to use the TFTP. Grub mm. is not easy for this. Firebox is much more simple. Much more user friendly. Firebox have a quite wide range of features. I try to resume most of them, but we have much more. Uh, Firebox is based on the same BM system as the kernel and the same configuration as the kernel. So it makes it very easy to hack and very easy to use. Uh, as an example, if you compare to Ubuntu, in Ubuntu you have a big config file .h, which is a nightmare because you don't know what they've done on what. So you need to search in the C code, search in the readme, what you have and how to enable it. We share exactly the same configuration system as the kernel. The K config part, we should make the box very easy to configure and very easy to set the configuration. We have the KML system, same idea as, as, uh, as the kernel. It's very easy to add a platform, very easy to hack. After inside the box, we have a lot of media attributes. You have uh, the null flash, you have the UBI, uh, on the way with the FS, we have the SD card, we have the AHCI, we have the RSA support, we have the SPR flash support, the e prime support, uh, you can go for all of this media. And inside of Firebox, we also have five systems. For example, it's over UPR, SD card, we need a FAT, we have a five file system. So basically, mount and LS, CD, exactly like it will be on the Linux platform. And after we have also network file. So basically, as a point, if you want to, to use NFS, you have two ways. The old way, like in your boot and simple command, or simply you mount the file system. So which means you can browse it instead. But in another part is uh, for the TFTP. TFTP is not really a file system, but you simply find the button. It does not have to have real hack to implement the TFTP of a file system. So basically, you cannot browse it, because the TFTP is not designed for this. But if you know the parts of the device, you can directly access it as the file system and copy the file by CP. We have a lot of data transport, TFTP and versus the network. We have also work on the, on the UART. So basically, over the UART, you have all of the families of each situation that models in the kernel. We have another part which is quite interesting, DFUP. Device Stream Update, which is a USB device class, which allows you to update, flash, your controller over USB device from the host. It will also allow you, for example, if you configure it, to upload a binary inside of the memory and jump. So basically, if you want to do some testing for putting something with your kernel, you can upload a dialog or a channel directly from the USB, no need to have any network set up. Or USB key to plug in the, in the platform. We also have a lot of graphics right now. We have a shrink version of the framework for support of the kernel and a splash mirror so basically, for for Webbox, you have two sides. One side is the kernel style with device drivers. One side is application style with BPC API. So basically, for the for the drivers, you learn from the kernel, and for the application part, you just have to use the C code or the command and this is implementing the same as in C code and open the protocol and run inside. On the on the box, as I said, we have a file system. So basically, to navigate in the file is quite smooth. 
you just have to use the same as in any Linux CD, LSCP, and so on, mount, handle it. I will show you after on, the, on how it works. It is very smooth and it's very easy to use. Uh, we have a bash. So basically, inside of Bearbox, if you want to customize Bearbox, you use shared code. It's a bash. Simple version of the bash. So basically, uh, when you want to execute something, you can write a shared script. Because Bearbox, have, the environment of Bearbox is a user of file system. And in Bearbox, you have you mount the RAM address, and inside you have, as in the in Linux, you have each other files and execute them. So basically, if you want to do complex stuff like boot sequence or specific development, it's quite easy. You just have to write a shell script. And you can edit them inside of Bearbox. That also, also provides you a lot of features. Uh, be able to have CRC and files, to be able to edit files, to be able to control uh, drivers from the command. GPIO, I2C, SPI, uh, and so on, LEDs. We have also decompression. So basically inside of Bearbox, we have a feature that's called file types. This is basically the same idea as when file in the Linux, in the Linux application. So in Bearbox, we are detecting all the time which is the type of the file you are using and handle it automatically. As in the point you uncompress something, we have a, a uncompressed command. It just provides a compressed file and after Bearbox is going to automatically detect what is it and uncompress for you. Same if you want to boot scan, a boot an image of the kernel. As it's a code on ARM, you have multiple types of image. We have the U boot image, the U image, and after we have the Z image directly. So inside of Bearbox, you can just set boot me this file. And you do not care if it's a U image, a Z image, or any other format we can detect. Bearbox will automatically detect. I support this file, I take it, I handle it. We have also device switch support. Because now it's mandatory on ARM. So basically, inside of Bearbox, you have two ways. First, you can provide the device tree <coughs> from anywhere, or you can concatenate the device tree to the Z image. So if you do so, Bearbox is going to detect that. You concatenate the Z image and the Z image to device tree, use the device tree, update the device tree, and replace the device tree to the kernel. Not as a blind, just put the kernel in the memory. And after we can handle the device tree, which means the device tree we can. Update it, so if you want to uh, fix some bug in the device tree, add features, update the DDR, update the command line, Bearbox is going to edit the device tree. Bearbox uh, was using in the past a different PC, which we removed uh, about a few days ago, uh, to use another format. It's called unflat format. So basically, instead of Bearbox, you are going to load a device tree, unflat the device tree in memory, which is cost some time. For example, on the, on the IMX platform, it is around two seconds. And about on the announcement for that file. But after, if you want to manipulate the tree, that you have to do to boot, because you have an example to change the, the change the memory size, change the command line, and sometimes do some fix up, because you are going to detect that on my hardware, the situation of hardware has a bug, I have to fix uh, the device tree. As an example, I have a bug on the on the calibration of the MMC, and I need to write the probability and uh, CD broker in the device tree. So if you use this. Even if you have unfathered the device tree memory, this is going to be 50 times more fast than using the libvdt to update the device tree. So you will the device tree to pass it to the camera. Because we have this report, we also add what we call the probing device tree, which means that uh, inside of Bearbox, you can probe the device of Bearbox from the device tree. So which means, in some of us, you just have to describe the minimum, which means the drivers, and how to work with the device tree, and then you can like on the kernel, from all the devices by the device tree, or share. So basically, you said, I have this device in C code, this device in the device tree, and then the will automatically detect this user a conflict, and handle it smoothly. In some of us, we have user interface. The basic user interface of any bootloader who have one is the common line. We have. have all the paths. As an important variable, we have security. So basically, if you do not want someone to access your bootloader, you can set up a password and a login. So which means if the people does not have a password, you can access it. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the Skype seems to be a little bit uh, making some problem, and your screen is not freezing. So that may I try to reconnect with you? No, no, it's not. I, I, I didn't change the, 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 the 
Oh, it's, it's well, working fine. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, just your face is... Uh, is uh, okay, please continue. Um, the um, yes, user interface. So basically, inside of our box, we think that a bootloader is for two, two types of people. The first type is developers. Command line is fine, you know how to use it. The second type is people, normal user. A command line is not friendly. It's very easy to learn, it's not very nice. So basically, inside of our box, we design another interface, and we I will go through after. But this is all of you to just navigate in some menu and to execute command and handle address. It's quite nice. And another part of the box is going to come very soon. We send the page back to the main is is application and support. That will allow you to add more features to the box at runtime and not link to the box. To go on the driver's part, inside of the box we have a lot of drivers. I'm not going to go through all of them. We have I2C, serial network, flash, MFD, MTD, SPI, USB, host device, one wire, and so we have a lot of device drivers. And this is basically the same idea as in the kernel. You have devices on the one side provided by the platform or detected automatically on the bus, and you have uh, drivers that is multi instance. The driver's model is quite similar. So basically, if you use a kernel, you will not lost at all. Inside of Bearbox, we have another part, it's exactly like in the kernel, it's called modules. So basically, you can compile your bootloader, compile a part of the bootloader as a modules, and be able to look it at runtime. This is not an application. It's going to code will be injected inside of Bearbox, and then run, run, run. So basically, the modules are deep here. After you have a lot of memory, print to handle the memory directly. Uh, uh, display, rack, and so this is basically inside we have network support, IPv4, DHCP. We have a quite good support of the DHCP with this code. Pass. Uh, vendor ID, user, uh, user, uh, cloud, and so on. We have net console to be able to have a console of MVP, TFTP, RTP, and FS, DMS. Another part of the box is that we have BMFMT, which means that basically the box can detect the file you want to execute. If it does not have to be smart, the will be smart for you. We have full complete support and a nice Azure product. This is the Apollo command line. As you can see on the top, here, this is the first output of that. And here, you have the shell. And the shell is like an Azure scroll as it's quite nice. The front buffer. Uh, the box, you, as you have the front buffer, you can display a splash screen. And that box, if you're asking to display a splash screen, you can provide just an image, and you will have two support. This is quite big, and then it's great to see what's the uh, 800 by 640 uh, PNG file that was released last month on the Apple platform. And at the end, the bare box image with quite a full feature of the Google run. Uh, SPM flash, non flash, SD, SD support, front of a network, uh, one more year, I2C, touch button. The bootloader was about 230 or 240 kilobytes, full feature in L with five systems. The new interface. In that box, as I said before, we think that the um, the shell interface is not for a lot of people. Very difficult to use for basic use. So oh, we designed a very small and very helpful company. And I think that's it, it doesn't shell. Because the shell interface makes people look, would be much more easy to test and use because you don't have to write the code, you don't have to worry about the application, free and so on. So the new shell is fine out. So basically in Bevo you have both. You can create the full menu from the shell or from past from the default of Azure. And in the both this menu was created from the shell only. I'm going to show you after in uh, I'm going to show you right now. Let's go here. Okay, this is, a, is a, I hope you can see clearly. Maybe I can put it here. Yeah. 
So here you can see I'm going to use an emulation of the ROM server from console R. So the the menu. The menu you are currently seeing here was completely <coughs> right from from shell code. You have here the different boot device. You can go to the network settings, you can go to config settings, you can edit entries, edit add more entries, everything can be done from the menu. Let me show you. Basically, uh, we are in the variables. Basically, in the out, you have the menu. Here are all the scripts that was designed to create the menu. Everything is right in shell. I'll give you an example. In the menu, you have the, as you see before, you have the boot part. Here, you have the four boot devices, you can see here. So if I go back in the menu, the four boot devices up here are just shell code executed. So basically, I should, I'm going to show you one. This is a boot device. So basically, if you want to add a new boot device, it's quite easy. You just have to create a new file in the slash amp boot directory, and then your device will pop up automatically on the menu. And if you want, and the people want to execute it, you just suppress enter, and you are going to do it. Which is quite easy to use for the people. And for you, it's very easy to handle from the shell code. So the menu is for two points. First, to simplify our work, and secondly, even for us, it's much more easy to use. But inside of our workflow, always keep in mind that you have to work the user world and the developer world. As is important, on the menu, uh, I have an implementation somewhere on a, on a tablet PC where I have some touch button, and I want to be able to choose which boot device I want. I have no keyboard. So basically, the menu is designed to work with two keys. On the keyboard, you have up and down, and enter. But on the device, you have two keys, you have enough. You just have one which should be down or up, and menu, and one which is enter, go. So basically, if you want to choose which platform you want to boot from a, from a tablet, from a, from a TV, with a remote control, you just have two keys. So if you have a command line, you can do nothing. But if you have a nice menu with just two buttons, you can example say, okay, I want to start up my menus, I want to start the diagnostic system, I want to start the, the update system, the frame set system, or I want to boot on one delivery, one and only menu. With just a menu, you can very easily choose what you control your boot order. You can also do very advanced stuff, but you can control quite smoothly. Applications. Um, one of the points is that uh, inside of uh, the box, we, we try to be much more easy to use. And we are focused on booting time. As an example, on ARM, we boot around the last The boot time we did is about 300 milliseconds. And we always work to boot much more fast. Recently, I released for now the bear box on the Cortex A5. I, I don't care about box because it's too good. And basically, we win two seconds on the booting time. Because Bearbox is focused on boot time quite a lot, and we work to modify the boot order to boot much more fast on the time. But one of the problems is the boot orders, even if we add self compressed image, MNU, to reduce the time to load from the device, reduce the time to comp and compress and, and use it, uh, at the end, because it's a boot order, you put everything inside. So you have a one binary. You are supposed to load from the flash of the, of the disk and put it in the DR. So which is more you put feature, more the boot loader is going to be big. So no matter how much you work hard to speed up the features, at a time more you have to change your slow. So one of the ways to stop to do this, there is two ways. First is to run modules. But the modules is going to be very hard in the current binary, like in the kernel. When you compile the modules for the version of the of your kernel. And you cannot add a data key. Another way is to have a binary API, this is called, to link uh, your bootloaders 
SQL application. So inside of that box, we start to work on syscalls. So basically, you will have basic features the same as ideas in the kernel, so button file, read the file, the ACTLs, uh, and so on. And you will have a, a libc, be able to implement your applications, and create applications that you want. So basically, when you flash your boot order, it's going to be a very small boot order. And then if you run some nice UI or specific applications, so for example, you want a diagnostic application, that you start a platform, uh, as a production, I want to start a diagnostic application to see what's going on, or to upload uh, the diagnostic application for the FU, USB key, or any way, and execute it, you can write applications. So that will to provide your binary behind that will be stable, so the same applications will be able to run across, uh, against different version of Pairbox, and you don't, you don't have to care about I can't find it or not. So basically, the, the application will allow you to much more freedom. And because it's a binary API, you will be able to write non GPL code. <coughs> the applications today, uh, we have a <coughs> subset of features, we have the DC, and we will have a parting of the curves that I'm going to see to show you that basically you can write simple UI but nice UI. So let's hide. So, I use a board here. Okay, I write a small script. Quite simple. Start the SCP, download me the file from the <coughs> Because of you have the beam application of you can execute applications very smoothly without doing anything. So first I'm going to do it on hand. Oh, it's, 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 is it possible to analyze the function? Uh, like this you can? Uh beta. And after I cannot, uh, here I cannot go here. Because after I can see nothing. Oh, good. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So here. So basically, okay, if you want to execute a shell file, don't forget to add the bashes. Because there was, when you are going to try execute in the file, and all, he's looking for the bash. So here you can see this is the end curve application. This is the curve application. So first, yeah. so basically, I can run the DFCP, I'm reading the IP. So if I want to see what's in my IP, I can go here. So I have all the IP information. Okay, the command that I is very nice command for Babox. It's going to give you what the devices and drivers you have inside of Babox. Here's the, here's the drivers, oh come, some of them. And here we have the devices. Okay. Before to go back to here, you can see one part. You see real name device like this because they are uh, device three devices. Which means they are not part of the speaker. They are device that you probe from the device three. The platform I'm currently running inside the machine, this is the server, is the ARM server, quad A9. And the firmware that we emulate inside of TMU is providing the device three to Bearbox. So, Pearbox, Pearbox is probing the device tree, and you have the device tree right here, FDT. Yeah, right here. It's right here. Here my device tree. So this is the device tree of provided by the K1. After here, you have to give us the Bearbox fix because there is some bug inside. And as you know, for the consider you have a power domain. So basically when you shut down something, uh Bearbox is going to remove or deliver some features. But as you want to can see, this is a device tree provided by the, the firmware, which is uh, Bigger. And then there are lots of bits and the device is smaller. Because we unflag it updates every class from principle and remove the new list of data. So here you can see that we have the SATA, the SATA is probed from the device tree. This part is what you see the device. And basically here you see the partitions. You see two types of partitions, zero and boot. Because Pearbox is using an EFI GPT 
fastician thermo in some of the hardware. So basically, here is just a number, probably just a generic number about the partition. And here, this is the device, the partition by name. So basically, just one if you want to boot the device, about the device, you just have to give a name. And you don't care while the partition is in the partition table, or even 0, 1, 2, 10, which one, we don't care. So basically, about 300 in first. Here also an example, the network interface, they are provided by the device tree. So basically, you don't need to write it. Here, as an example, this device, this is a UART, this is a console. It's not, as you see, this type of device, address dot name. Because this is a device that we provide by the C code. But, if you examine the device, you are going to see that, in fact, this is also a device tree device. And therefore, match both devices, detect that the device was provided by C and by the device tree, and do not copy through that. So here you have the device tree information, and you see that this is the same device, of course. Same for the timer here. This is the C device, also present in the device tree, but both is a match. And then you can see here, this is an ARMBA bus. So basically, all of this is from the Amber device. Same as the GPIO. The GPIO are provided by the device tree and present on the Amber device. So to move back on the application. So I'm going to take this, download my applications, and to examine my application. You have a command, it's called IPP info. Basically, this command is going to give you information of the, of the application. So inside of an application, we are storing some string, some information. So you can write any one of the code, and then you have it in the file application. So here, an example, this just provides you the, the information provided by the libc of Babel. So the versions, the license, uh, the license of the, of the libc is GPLv2 plus additional rights, which means the additional rights is that you are allowed to link Technically, against the library and does not be contaminated by the GPLv2. But the libc still GPLv2 and the final application is not. So, as you see, this application is not a GPL application, it's a non GPL application. If I download the example application, and I do the here, you see, this is a GPL application and have a description. If, if I open Anywhere in the code, 
of the DCD or anywhere in the code is linked at the end of the binary. Okay. And then you can execute on here. Uh, here is the policy example. So the police provides you some uh, some degree information on that. So basically uh, yeah, you can provide arguments, you can have the free test and this is the police just here for one part for myself, my work, to be able to test this is cool. You can see you have open here with your phone here, the start, the read link, the team link, uh, create your experiment over the far right file and so on. So if you want to see the TMP directory that we've created, this was created by the application. We have also the first application. So basically you have a personal application. Quite nice. So you can the point if you want is not dire, you want a non UI, a dire slant UI, sound of bar box, just for an application. If you want to um, some technical people, you have a device, you want to do a test, you want to check it after, run on any test applications, you can run it at any time and have a nice and smooth UI, where the people does not have to understand how bear box works. You basically you find a way, yes, you use the device, it detects the people have an application to present. You execute it, and then you have a nice UI to be able to interact with the box. Write in C code and link against any bear box that you the same idea. Uh, I'm going to try to download another example we have. Let's try to come on. No, it's quite nice. Examples of the of the of the curves. So basically, you have really uh, like a, like a curve support for that. So basically, you have menu, form, panel, and the curves. So if you want one nice application, it would be nice. As only if you want a virus like menu, right? An application is existing. The interesting point is that this will not be loaded every time you start, just on the menu, and you can update it without changing the bug order. Because in the final product, you cannot change your book order. It's too much risky. So write applications, you can change them, and update them across the time without we have to worry on which revision of the of the box you use, which which application, which C uh, function I have. You have a static API for the sysbox. You have your you compile it and you can execute it. I'm going to show you also, let's go back, the slash screen. This, this is another emulation of the Versa seal, uh, it's an online platform, where we have the graphical support. Keyboard, 
You can have a new. Okay, uh, this one is a bit short. Here, uh, you have what we call a graphical menu. So this is an expression. This is the here you have this font, this is a specific font, nice font, image, and then you can interact with it. So this is different settings. Okay. You can have different settings. So you have a menu of all different version. So you can have a nice menu, you can implement a nice menu for your applications. But you can have images, every you can see here every item has an image. Some of them have a default one because it's set one, some of them are a specific one. You can see that the first one is a specific image, so a pair box image. But all of this is done in shell code. So implementation of the menu is in C code, and all of that is done in simple channel code. No simple. Settings, uh, and so on. Let's see. Okay, here. Here, the slash print. So basically, here I, I use a. If you see here, this is a. Where is it? Here, I use a shell, I just use splash print. I, I display the PNG file. Normally, I have two files, so I can simply ask him to display the second one. Okay, so the font is wrong. This is the image like this. So basically, I can change my file and download it with the display. If I run to include the other one, um, second. Download, um, because you have the cross of the one, but you can ask him to put the, to put the font. Splash. So basically, you can specify the color, for example, if you want. I want it white, black, or any color you want. You choose. That box will handle it by itself. Uh, so this is a, don't forget about this, this is a STL code. There are those you can be rendering off screen. So basically, there uh, are here, uh, I didn't put this in emulation, but there are those can have um, double buffering if you want. So basically, you render the memory and you claim the copy memory at once. This is completely due to handle automatically. You don't have to understand how it works, even in the C code. So here you have a simple menu. Very simple. Which is over the front buffer. Or, if I disable this one, I can have a normal menu. If I look here, yeah. Okay. So, over here, you have, can have a simple menu, like a text. Or a graphical menu. Here, this is a graphical menu. Which is quite nice. So, with application support, you can write some, some anchors, or you can install the application support. You will have a front buffer as you can operate the device. You can also start to implement some nice menu, such as this one. And keep in mind, Babok is still quite fine, even if it's small. Uh, here it's big because it's... Uh... If you take a look at the, at the Versatile build, we have a splashing which is quite nice. The binary is still very small. Binary is here. The binary is about... 248 kilo. Where you have network, flash, uh, no flash, 
splash screen, the splash screen is fine, GPIO, timer, NFS, DFCP, X4, all of them with a big splash screen, fully in PNG. You are still at a very small size, which is about 240 gig. If you take a look on reboot, a basic bootloader with not even the splash screen time is already 400 gig. I can put on the ASMR platform. I have the build right here. We are 249 and we have uh, SPI, Flash, MMC, NAND Flash, UBI, X4, FAT, one wire, touch button, I2C, uh, kernel of code, uh, PNG support, <coughs> the splash screen inside, which is a 50 kilo for the PNG, and we are still in just 250 kilo. If I compare to your reboot release, where well, they don't have a PNG file, they don't have the one wire, uh, they have the USB device, USB host more, uh, but no it's all, uh, they are already at 389 kilo clients, but nearly no more. And they are much more slower. On the good time it's about double. But if you deploy them on uh, uh, STRX sub, uh, double core XA9 platform, one gigahertz. The U-Boot implementation takes 11 seconds to start from call start and keep jumping inside the first instruction of the kernel. Uh, bare box from loading from the MMC, because they boot on the EMMC, will take less than 3 seconds to do it. So bare box is much more fast, much more smaller than any the other implementation. Uh, any question? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Skype is on the phone, so you can use the mic. Okay, I have two questions. Thank you for introducing the IPT best bear box in much better shape than compared to you. And I have two questions. One is uh, if I want to add uh, our platform support into the bear box, so what I should do? Uh, okay, we discuss on which platform? ARM, MIPS? Uh, actually, ARM platform. Uh, can, I, can I know the CPU if it's possible? Uh, you can uh, come to the company the name is Nessus, and unfortunately the, our Nessus was not supported yet. So. <laughs> oh, I know Renesas, okay. yeah, yeah. I know Magnus. I know Magnus. Yeah, 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 Magnus was to me. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, basically it's quite simple. Uh -huh. uh, I'm going to show you the structure of Babel. Uh -huh. It's going to be quite nice for you. So basically, if you see here, you are going to see something you are very similar to. Bearbox follow mostly the same implementation as in the kernel. So basically, if you have your boot, you can call. Mm -hmm. uh, you can steal some drop, some code from your boot uh -huh. because we are still have some uh, querying together. But it's very easy. What you are supposed to do? Think about I'm writing a kernel, right? A kernel. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to show you on the Versatile Express. Mm -hmm. Will be not so much fun in the fall. So, so basically, what you are supposed to do is to implement a clock support first. So, here, my people, we have a simple version of the common clock. So, the first step, you are supposed to implement the clock. You are supposed to implement your timer. So, as an example, if you have a timer, uh, if you are double for the tonight, you can use this timer and you don't have to implement anyone. You can use the ARM SM. So basically, you just have to provide to implement the device of the TWD, provide him the address, mm -hmm. implement your program of the clock of the, of the timer, mm -hmm. and the timer will be proved. After, you have to implement your URLs, your device, mm -hmm. which is a device driver, simple implementation, mm -hmm. and you have and after you will have all of the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you want to add a new SDC, it's very simple. You implement like in the camera of the cloud device, you 
can steal the URL from your goods, mm -hmm. implement the MNC or all your, your host implementation, and you are done. All of the rest will be automatic. You will have all of them. Basically, you need to think that in the box, it's very, very easy to do it. Yeah, I'm currently working on smart electronic platform, which is a, a double A9, the same as the Renaissance, basically. Double A9 plus an SH4 core mm -hmm. attached together. So it's something very similar to Renaissance. Uh, and it should be quite simple. Basically, here I have all the pin code. I have my DR. I register my UART. So it's a work in progress. So here I have my UART. I have my timer, which is a device. And and after, inside of my platform, I just said, I have to dig, so I cannot detect it. Here, we still have an old style platform, so we still have a machine ID. So on the Polon Versatile Express, I have none. And my UART. If I go for a much more, much more full support platform, um, you just have to change. It's beyond a lot of details. Mm -hmm. Because basically, go to the screen. We have one wire, uh, NAT flash, uh, network, you know, double network interface, six uh, the fine. Here you have flash, uh, frame buffer box. It's MNC here, I two C here with the touch panel, and so. So basically, if you want to add a different platform, you have basically to copy a lot of files from the piano. Mm -hmm. And therefore, on the admin platform, my NAND driver is 90% the same as the piano. Mm -hmm. Because we have the MP. My FPI flash driver is 97% the same as the piano. Mm -hmm. Same for my data flash. So if you want to add the Renaissance part, I think it will take you about one week of work. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I think for my group, maybe two days. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll try that, okay, thanks. And, uh, and my, another question is, uh, you know, the later is a way requested to support the DT binding stuff, and sometimes we need to pass uh, some of the DT, some binary database things, you go to the counters. So do you have any idea to support this kind of DT supports uh, in the uh, bare box? I'll show you You have right here. An example on this platform, uh -huh. uh, we have a one wire. From the one wire, we are be able to detect who, uh, which platform is uh, is running. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here, an example. I know I'm on platform from Kogans, and I know this platform is up. Okay. So I need to specify the the current detection is broken. So basically, in some of the box, when before passing the device tree to the kernel, mm -hmm. you can update it on the fly. Uh -huh. And I'll give you another part, which if you are really smart, you can use this auto and with this focal setup. Uh, it's for rubber herring. We work with the maintainer of the device tree. Well, there is also Gatsila, which is one of the maintainer of the device tree, not likely. So basically here, what I'm going to show you here, we have provided by the main firmware of the, uh, of the ARM server that you cannot touch, you cannot even have access. The main firmware loads the ARM to the TR and jump. And provides us at a specific address here, the device tree. So basically, we unflap the device tree, we get the device tree, Find inside of the device tree how many the army has, and we add it. And then here we can place on the power domain controller and some specific table. We update the device tree on the fly. Basically, we enable the SATA, disable or disable the SATA. We update the CPU information, and after as we are smart. We simply, 
and C, C equals to the code, we can say, okay, uh, I'm on a device three or not. If I have a device three provided by uh, the firmware, I simply draw device three. Um, so you can see here, we, we can see code because we think that the people need to have a control. So, I simply throw my device free. And as you can see here, the device is called from device free. Mm -hmm. So you have not so many devices that are in the, in the inside of, uh, of Bearbox. We take it from the device free. So Bearbox handles the device free completely by itself mm -hmm. and very fast. Mm -hmm. Compared to the FDG and Bearbox, I said, and fact, device speed takes sometimes about two microseconds, mm -hmm. but after, if you need to update it for any reason, it's 50 times more fast than the device. Mm -hmm. And the binary at the end is smaller. The one you have to copy the VR is smaller also. Yeah, okay. interesting. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> I tried. Okay, anyway. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, Jane, and uh, I think Skype communication seems to be working fine, and I hope you to, uh, you know, uh, hope you to join the Jamboree again, uh, maybe three months after. I just have one point I'd like to show. So, sure. Uh, uh, if you are used to work on new boots, mm -hmm. you are going to have one trouble that I hate so much, and a lot of people do so. Is in new boot, you have to choose at compilation time where it's supposed to be compiled, where it's supposed to be compiled. Okay? In their box, we think this is nightmare. In their box, everything is handled by store as runtime. With that, probably uh, uh, we are going to be able to find everything to be handled at at the at the code full time. So basically, here this is an example on the this, this is an example on the Atmel platform. Atmel platform we are able to get very good. So basically, you can see here that we are going to detect where we are from, specifically in the memory, where is bare box, which partition, where is the environment, if it is in the SPI, which is in the case AC25, SPI, MCPI flash, is N25 P80 fiber. Here this is the NAS flash. I could have another one, but I would have another flash, or I simply the file on a bounded box. Bear box is going to handle this automatically. You have nothing to write and to choose at the compiler. Everything is choose at the right time. So basically, this bear box, if I compile, I use the reference book form, so I can have the same folder boot after the protection that the bootstrap can boot from NAND flash, SPM flash, and I'm and I don't care about it. And that box is moving under it automatically, completely. So it's, it's much more nice and much more fun. Instead of having to compile everything. One of the problems on this platform, but on this platform we have a like, hardware so input. So basically, if you want to use the the touch print button, you have to reset the stupid API. This chip set takes one second to read and you need to respect it, otherwise it never works. And we want to use the button in the bootloader. So in standard Bearbox, we have a nice feature which was cooler. Because in Bearbox, you don't have inferiors. So there's no hope to have um, timer interruption and so on. But in standard Bearbox, we have a mechanism to allow you to run masking stuff. So basically, what we do here, we start the program with the HDMI, inside of the HDMI, we start the reset sequence, 
specifying polar function, and this polar function is regularly and after 500 seconds, is finished with the GPIO, call the next polar function, and then finish the reset seconds, and I actually see another shadow. So basically, when I boot my platform, I know I need one second to reset my chip, and I do not have to wait this one second during my booting time, because I know I have all the stuff to do. It will take me about half a second, plus a small time off at the end, and then I know that within one second, my platform is completely set up, and I can load my device tree. So this is one of the ways of adopts to handle the booting time and the masking task. So do not waste the time on a research chipset and work much smoother. This is one of the stuff that you both don't have and most of the do not have. And it's really nice because Bellbox is designed to boot in fast. We don't like to waste time. And waste the time in a stupid reset of the chipset. One second is a nightmare. So this is one of the features of Bellbox to show you how to do not waste time and to do task and masking time, which is quite nice. Basically, this reset may spend 1.2 seconds, but you will respect the one second. And you will not have to wait one second in the middle. Start up out of bear box for 200 milliseconds, wait one second, and continue. So at the end, have a two seconds good time inside of the bear box, instead of having one point something. This is one of the ways we need in the bear box to move. Okay. Okay. One point I want to ask. And of course, you have nice features such as Fifix that like in the camera because we have the Philips support. So basically, if you work in Bearbox, you are going to see two sides. The only next camera application is one to develop money copying, mm -hmm. and the uh, C application. And if you want to write an application for products, it's a nice feature. You have the API path which will allow you to write your application one time. Just check this compile correctly, then so your API and then use it and change it across the time, which is quite nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Any question and uh, discussion, Melanie? Okay. Thank you very much, Jean, and I hope you to have a good uh, afternoon. And, uh, uh, join us again in the next upcoming, you know, January three months later. Thank you very much, and with. Uh, Thank you.